Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And last time we did the biggest breakout players from each team, or most likely breakout players from each NHL team. This time I'm going with the most underrated player from each team. Now, remember, this is just mine. I'm not telling you what the actual fact is. In fact, it's been fun sending it around to all the teams in the land and going in Facebook and discussing and debating about this, which you can do on my show, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show that is supported and uh, funded by Steel Flyers All Sports Network, www.steelflyers.com. If you like all four major sports and teams within those major sports, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Uh, yeah, the NHL Pearl Wisdom Show, which I do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 3 and 5 Eastern, and Tuesday and Thursday between 7.30 and 9.30 Eastern, where we discuss and debate and banter on about topics like this. So let's look at it. The most underrated player from each team in the comment section. Let me know if you agree, don't agree whatever the case may be, or just put yours in and I'll discuss down there. Promise. It's what I like to do. That's why I do this. Okay, let's take a look. Starting out with Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, oh, look, I already have them up here. Palat is who I picked. Uh, I, I think Palat is one of the most underrated wingers in the game. The guy has consistently put up uh, a, a basically a 50 to 60 point pace his whole career. And he gets lost in that Tampa Bay Lightning lineup with the Kucherovs and points and Hedstroms and Vasilevskis. People kind of forget that this is one of the best two-way wingers in the game. I think he's extremely underrated. Mention to somebody, uh, like, who's the best players on Tampa Bay and see if Palat's name comes up. Quite often not. In fact, I hear Kalorn more than Palat, and I think Palat's a better player than Kalorn. So maybe you don't, but uh, that's my pick from the Tampa Bay Lightning. To go to the Dallas Stars, I'm going with Essa Lindell. Um, I almost want Ropo hints here, but he did put a point to game up last year, and I think his name is kind of out there a little more. Lindell is a guy that... Is just a great shutdown defenseman. Um, has been doing it for a couple years. And again, you got Nico Heischer and, you know, more sexier names out there that people don't really think about, like John Klingberg. Uh, and now that they brought in Ryan Suter as well, people are going to forget that Lindell plays more minutes than just about anybody except for Miro Heiskanen. And he plays in all different roles. One of the best shutdown guys in the league. Doesn't get enough credit. I should maybe do a video on the best shutdown defenseman in the league. That would be a good one. Okay, next. Um, Oilers. This is tough because I don't, I'm not sure there's really anybody that's underrated so much. Maybe Josh Archibald, Oilers fans would say. Uh, but I think... The most I'm going to go with Mike Smith, and I know people are going to say, "Well, maybe he wasn't underrated last year. Uh, maybe he was." Like, I don't think the Oilers would even have come close without Mike Smith last year. Thirty-nine-year-old goaltender that has been doing this for a very long time, but I'm kind of picking him just because he's the most under one of the most underrated goaltenders of all time, let alone last year. Um, he has, in Arizona, he did just crazy things in there. His numbers never looked super great, but Arizona never had a great team. He was unbelievable in Arizona for the, long, for the time that he was there and uh, never really got enough credit for it. I, I don't even think he was that bad in Calgary when he went to Calgary. But for his career alone, I'm taking Mike Smith as the most underrated Oiler. Tell me, Oilers fans, what you think about that. Um, 
What do we got? Canadians, Alekanin. Whoops. Did I miss one? Oh, sorry, Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, I'm going with Murphy. Murphy on the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, not much underrated here as of right now. I almost went with Jonathan Taze because he's thought of as an overpaid player, but still does a lot of great stuff uh, when he's on the ice, and we'll see how well he does this year. I almost went with Kirby Doc because people just don't know how good he is yet, I think, a lot of people. Um, he is pretty amazing. But Connor Murphy, I'm taking him because he uh, – Really had a rough go, and he had to work at it to become a good defenseman over his career. And the last couple of years, Connor Murphy has actually done really well in a shutdown role for Chicago. Um, I've heard – I go – because I do a show every day, I hear a lot of things about a lot of players from a lot of people. And I hear a lot of people saying that he's not a good defenseman, like they want to trade him away. Their own fans. And – uh analytically that doesn't line up and from what i watch when i watch him on my eye test i think he looks great next um we'll go with the winnipeg jets and lowry in the middle for the winnipeg jets one of the best shutdown centers in the league by far do you know he was 6'5 210 pounds he can skate he actually puts up not bad points for from the third line spot. 24 points in 52 games last year. And plays against the other team's top line all the time. Putting up those kind of points, playing against the team's top line. Uh, I don't hear enough Selkie talk with Lowry. He is your classic third line center. I would say if I were to do it, I bet you I could would put him in the top. Five to seven in the league. Five. Top five shutdown centers in the league. Tell me if you think so. Awesome. Uh, I almost went with Ehlers as well. There's a few guys that could have been. But I think Lowry still is the most underrated player on that team. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm going with uh, Jason Spezza here. Uh, there isn't much underrated here. They're mostly because their bigger players are not underrated. Like everybody knows how good they are. Almost want to go. I wonder if I should change this because I hear so much crap about Nylander. Uh, Nylander is a freaking awesome player. Do, player. The thing is, 42 points in 51 games last year. His defensive game is improving greatly. I think you're going to see more and more point production out of out of uh, Nylander. Maybe I should put him there. That'll really tick off Edmonton fans. But the fact of the matter is, Jason Spets at 38 years old has been crushing it from the third, fourth line role position. Look at his points last year: 30 points in 54 games. Uh, playing lower down in the lineup with not the greatest line mates. Uh, he, he did get power play time, of course. But in 11 minutes a game, putting up those kind of points and playing all around, not complaining, huge boost to the energy and, and leadership to that team. I, I, think he's under, I think he's being very underrated for what he's doing for that organization right now. So that's kind of why I have him there. Uh Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, sorry, Smith. Riley Smith. I'm going with Riley Smith. It's just one of the best two-way wingers in the game. Um, not many players on their team is, are really underrated. Uh, the other one I was kind of looking at is Zach Whitecloud. Um, he has just improved so much every single year. Um, maybe Shea Theodore. But he is getting a lot of talk about Norris talk, and he should. I think there's a lot of people that might take Shea Theodore here. Uh, but I think he's actually getting more talk than people think from what I hear. I hear his name a lot. I never hear Riley Smith when you talk about the Vegas Golden Knights. And you should. And I, unfortunately, it looks like they may not be able to re-sign him next year. I'm, if I, I'm all over it. If I'm out there, I'm giving Riley Smith 
four years at, you know, six, seven million dollars next year and being very happy with the shutdown winger that can put up points like crazy. Like uh, last year was kind of a down year point wise for him for whatever reason, but he's a 50 to 60 point guy before that. There is and fantastic defensively. Love him. That's my guy for the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, Penguins. Don't really have an underrated. I think you could kind of go with Kasperi Kapanen because he had one. He had a good year, but I want to see him do more than that next year. He was a great addition to bring back to Pittsburgh. His speed helped out a lot. Um, um, Brian Rust would be one that you could look at as um, underrated. However, most of that is because people believe that Brian Rust has been propped up a lot by Sidney Crosby, and that could be true. But I still think he's an excellent two-way winger. But the guy I'm going with actually is Freddie Bluger. Teddy Bluger, I should say. Freddie. Teddy Bluger. Um, he can play up and down your lineup. I really think that Teddy Bluger could play higher in the lineup if they would afford him to do so. Uh, Jeff Carter was a nice pickup, but I thought it was time for Teddy Bluger to keep moving up here. I, I, I love him. I love his attitude. I love his two way game. He put up 22 points in 43 games last year. Like quietly, that is not bad when you're playing bottom six all the time. And also what I love about him is he just keeps on getting better and better every year. He's one of those guys that just has worked for everything that he has in the NHL and continues to do so. A great role model for younger kids that are probably going to be coming Pittsburgh's way in the next little while. Uh, Washington Capitals. I'm going to Eller. Another, a lot of these are those third line shutdown guys that nobody ever talks about. Um, he gets kind of lost in the muddle of Wilson, Kuznetsov, Backstrom, Ovechkin, and you don't really hear much about Lars Eller's con contribution to um, to Washington as a uh, great shutdown centerman that can put up some decent points. He's got a killer shot too. Such an underrated shot. Uh, just does his business every year. Makes um, puts up some decent points and shuts down the other team's top line. Two years ago, he had 39 points in 69 games. Um, I don't know. Very underrated. That's my guy for Washington. Uh, Boston Bruins, I'm going off the board here. There's actually a few guys that you could say are underrated, especially like Brandon Carlo. It was tough for me. I wanted to go Brandon Carlo because I, he's there's another shutdown defenseman. A lot of People don't quite often pay attention to shutdown defensemen. However, I think the last two years in the playoffs, Brandon Carlo's name has gone up, up out there enough that um, you know that people start to understand how good of a defenseman he is. I think he should be in the same breath as Pellich. However, I'm going with a guy that I have been touting for a very long time in Linus Allmark that they just picked up from Buffalo. Um, I've been saying he's underrated for the last two years. People kind of laughed at me. People that don't watch a lot of hockey because I watch like a divorce worthy amount of hockey. You're going to love him in Boston. He, uh, he's, he's great. I see why they gave him that contract and you're going to see why. Um, but I think he's been very underrated for a couple of years. Maybe that tag will be taken off from him this year. Uh, the blues, Oscar Sundquist, Oscar Sundquist, another shutdown centerman. Uh, that has been doing it every year. Like every coach loves a guy like Oscar Sundquist. Low maintenance, doesn't complain, will do anything to win. Puts up some decent points from the in the third line role. We'll play fourth line. We'll play wing. We'll do whatever you want. Sidney Crosby, when he was with Pittsburgh, said he was his favorite, like one of the, his favorite player. That's something. He was really angry when they traded him away too actually true story next Colorado Avalanche yeah uh, Colorado Avalanche Taves Devon Devin Taves I always want to call him Devon why 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 do I want to call him Devon all the time 
Devin Taves, uh, I've been saying that since his Islander days. There was a time when I was talking about a trade to from Marner from Toronto to the Islanders so they didn't have the cap problems that they have right now. And I had Devin Taves on, the, on, on my trade list from the Islanders there. And people in Toronto were like, why would we take that, you know, no name or whatever the case may be? Well, he isn't a no he, – he's still – not known enough, but he's playing a top two role there in uh, Colorado, and deservedly so. Fantastic defenseman. 24 minutes a night in Colorado. And I've been saying he's the most he's one of the most underrated in the league for quite some time, and I'm going to keep on saying it. There were other guys like Valerie Nachushkin that you could put there. Um, Darcy Kemper will probably not be underrated after this year, I'll tell you that right now. Next the LA Kings and I took Peterson. This guy now he has been doing, he hasn't been putting up huge numbers, but LA's just been figuring out their defense the last couple of years. Uh, but if you watch him, you can see that this guy stops pucks like nobody's business. Um, he's been getting a lot of high quality chances in LA the last little while. And uh, I think that last year was a little bit of a down year, but he was putting before that 0.922s and 0.924 save percentages. Nobody really hears about him because LA is not really a factor yet. Watch out. Watch out this year. Watch out for the next four years. I wouldn't doubt that Peterson is in the uh, Vesna talk. He's, he's that good. Underrated, big time underrated. Uh, there was a couple other guys that I looked at there, uh, Velarde. Um, I still think Dustin Brown doesn't get enough credit for how he's gone through his career. Uh, got the captaincy taken away, which was really just a captaincy thing to do. And um, was, was has got, fought through injuries and stuff like that a lot. Great leader in the room. Um, and uh, Tobias Bjornfort, I think, is still pretty underrated, but he's only 20 years old. So it was hard to pick. Most of their underrated guys are pretty young and haven't really – you know, for good reason, haven't been underrated, uh, are underrated because they haven't really got their full uh, game going yet. So that's why I went with him. San Jose Sharks. Um, I'm going to take a guy, I'm going to say Dylan Gambrell. Uh, although I almost took, uh, I almost took Mario Ferrero. However, um, I think he started to get fairly well known last year as the only guy that was really their good defenseman last year. Mario Ferrero, if you said Mario Ferrero, I wouldn't blame you at all. But I had, I wanted to take a fourth line guy in Dylan Gambrell here, who, when he came into the team, it's like their energy changed. Um, sometimes there are energy guys that just can, the way they compete, the way their attitude is, the way they talk to play other players on the team. They just build a team really well. And Dylan Gambrell seemed to be like that. He brought a level of compete to that team that we hadn't been seeing up until that point. I think that was very underrated. And I think he's pretty underrated on the ice too. He's, he's, he can play. He can play. Uh, much more than he's not just some goon or something like that. Uh, Flyers. I'm going to go, there's a few guys here as well. I mean, Claude Giroux will always be underrated. Always. Uh, I, you could pick him every single year. He's so underrated that he's not underrated anymore because he's well known for being underrated. 43 points in 54 games last year. Like, pe just, people just completely forget about that guy. He's, he should, he's a Hall of Famer as far as I'm concerned. If he's not, there's something wrong. But that's how underrated he is. But I'm not picking him here. Because he's just the normal pick. I'm picking Provorov. I still don't think Provorov has got enough props. He he was a he was a solid piece. He had a down year last year, but everybody had a down last year last year. Twenty six points and uh, strong defensive play is a down year. Okay, uh, he's gonna he's he crushes it. He crushes it, but he does it in such a way that you that that you don't really notice everything he does. He does all the little things right. He's big. He's solid. He's always in position. I love him. He doesn't get enough credit for how good of a defenseman he is. That's my pick. 
for the Philadelphia Flyers. The Panthers, Mackenzie Weger. Mackenzie Weger. Somebody, please. Mackenzie Weger. Okay. The guy is going to be. I, I, I'm going to go as far as to say he may even get some Norris consideration. He, he's better than Ekblad now. He's probably too un, underrated on his own team. I've been talking about him now for three years. I've been saying, watch out for Mackenzie Weger. Mackenzie Weger is way better than you think. Nobody, go, oh yeah, Mackenzie Weger. No, Mackenzie Weger. Excellent. And this year, watch out. People are going to know about Mackenzie Weger this year. Part of it is he's probably because he's in Florida, but I think he's extremely underrated. I know there's lots of people that are going to say Jonathan Huberto, and I agree with you. He is underrated. He's one of the best left wingers. He's becoming one of the best left wingers, not just in the game, but of all time. And part of that is being in Florida. Alexander Barkov has been Mr. Underrated forever, but he finally got a selfie, so you can't really call him underrated anymore. Next. Zona, uh, Chikrin, man. Chikrin. Jacob Chikrin is already uh, Norris caliber defenseman. He is unbelievable. Lost on the island that is the Arizona Coyote. Fantastic defenseman. Only 23 years old. Puts up 41 points last year on a team that didn't score a lot. Um, he just never stops. And uh, he plays the position in every way spectacular. I, I love him. Jacob Chikrin is, so if you don't know his name because he's in Arizona, remember his name because he is going, if they can ever get a team together, <laughs> he's going to do great things. Uh, New York Rangers, I got a tie here. I can't choose. Ryan Lindgren. Again, one of those guys who would be probably in my top 10 shutdown defensemen in the league right now. Uh, doesn't get talked about. Adam Fox, of course, won the Norris. Deserved it, for sure. No doubt about it. Uh, uh, Jacob Truba. People talk know him because of the big trade. and He's been around a long time. Ryan Lindgren, second best defenseman on the team. One of the best defensemen. He's a better defenseman than Jacob Truba. There, I said it. Right now, he's better than Jacob Truba. Love him. Uh, the other one was Philip Heidel. Philip Heidel, can we start, can we start playing? Uh, that's the reason why Ryan Strom trade stuff is up there right now. They got to make some room for Heidel. Heidel is going to be one of the better two-way centers in the game. I'm really excited to see what that kid's going to do when he gets tons of ice time that he deserves. He should be getting 17 to 18 minutes a night next year. Uh, and crushing it. I really, really love this guy. Uh, I've heard other people say he's going to be like a third-line center. I don't agree at all. I think he's going to be a fantastic two-way second-line center. Maybe. His, he's only 21 years old, man, and he's putting up 22 points in 42 games and playing very good defensively. Uh, he could be a number one. He really, really could. Those are my picks for the Rangers. I couldn't decide which one. Tell me what you think. Uh, Kraken. Seattle Kraken. I'm going with Susie. Possibly McCann. McCann second. Close second. I don't know what the heck this guy's got to do to not get traded and relieve a team or whatever. Consistently puts up points every year. I don't know. Does Plays well defensively. I don't know what the problem is. Why he always has to move on somewhere, but... He should be able to do, uh, hopefully can solidify a spot in Seattle. But Carson Soucy, they the cat friendly here even puts him a little lower than I would here. I think Carson Soucy is going to knock Jamie Alexiak out of that spot. I, he's that good. Great shutdown defenseman. Um, kind of got lost in Minnesota, who has a very underrated defense period altogether. Now he gets a chance here, and I think he's going to take it. I think I don't think Mark Giordano is going to get all this uh, playing time up here at 37 years old. I wouldn't doubt if Carson Soucy is on the top pairing. Watch it. Watch it. It's going to happen now. Watch it. <laughs> uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. Varensky. 
Varensky was a better defenseman than Jones. Straight out. Better defenseman than Jones. Uh, one of the sickest defensemen out there. Doesn't get anywhere enough credit because he's in Columbus. Um, should be getting some Norris, more Norris consideration, more talk about him. I love the guy. There's other guys on this team like uh, Al- Alexander Tessier, but he's still just figuring it out at 21 years old. I'm going with Wierenski. Uh Flames. I got to go with Anderson. Um, Rasmus Anderson. Uh, under the radar, he's going to be in their top two. What's this? Noah Hannafin not on the top. Top no. It'll be Rasmus Anderson. Ra- People will know about Rasmus Anderson this year. I just did a breakout player of the year, and I believe it was Rasmus Anderson I picked. So I'm t- I'm saying he's the most underrated. And he's going to break out even more this year. Uh, love the guy. He could, at the end of the day, you could almost consider him one of the, like, maybe the best player they have, besides maybe Matthew Kachuk, depending on how much these guys improve. I think he's that good. Very, very good defenseman. Uh, Islanders. This was tough, Islanders. Look, I got him up here already. But look, at I'm going to show you really slow. Really slow. Who it is? Brock Nelson. Yeah, because of the all the players that they have around them, especially like that fourth line that gets talked about all the time. I hear more about the fourth line than the Islanders than I do anybody else. Barzal, um, Pajo. Pajo's great. All of those guys are great. Everybody forgets about Brock Nelson. The guy who sits there and plays second line center every year, puts up 50 points. 55 points, 25 goals, somewhere around there. Consistently every year, plays grit, plays very good defense. Excellent second line center. One of the better second line centers in the league. Nobody talks about him, so I thought I'd put him in there. Brock Nelson. New York Islanders. I'm still saying Jacob Slavin. I'm going to keep on saying Jacob Slavin until the guy gets a Norris. He's... He doesn't put up huge points, but he's the best shutdown defenseman in the league, besides maybe Hedman. Second best shutdown defenseman in the league. As a pure shutdown guy, he is absolutely phenomenal. And he's putting up 31, 36 points, 30. You know, nothing wrong with that. Two-way guy, plays against the other team's top line all the time, never makes a mistake, this guy. Never. He's always in the right spot all the time. Um, I'm just going to keep on touting him, touting him, touting him, touting him until finally, hopefully, he gets a Norris. I thought he, I thought he could have got it this year. I love Fox. It was a nice pick, but yeah, you got to take Fox. But Slavin was second for me. I love, love Slavin. Next, uh, New Jersey Devils. So it's hard to pick the player that I'm going to pick here. Because you've got Miles Wood. I think he's incredibly underrated. Uh, all of them, really. Because they're young and they're growing. And a lot of people don't know them yet. Because New Jersey hasn't been very good. Jack Hughes, I still think, is extremely underrated. People have given up on him, I've heard. A lot of people have given up on him. 20 years old, putting up that many points. But actually, even no matter above everybody else, Jonathan Bernier. Jonathan Bernier has been the most underrated goaltender in the last three years. And I'll, you know what? Uh, you know how I know? Because I said that Carolina made a big mistake not signing Bernier when they had him in his hands. And I had people on my live come on and say, oh, you know what, Bernier, Bernier is like garbage goaltender, blah, 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 because they're looking at his Detroit stats. One guy said that the two-year, $4 million contract was the worst contract given out this year. So I would say that's pretty underrated. If you actually watched the Detroit Red Wings last year and you know the game well, like even average, that guy stopped pucks like crazy, man. I was taking Detroit to lose by a goal and a half a lot last year. And I so I watched a lot of Detroit games because I wanted to see my bet come uh, see it come in, and my bet come in, and he kept on stopping like 50, 
55 shots, 40 shots, just getting pummeled. And he kept on stopping, stopping pucks. The guy just stops pucks. That's all. Watch out, New Jersey. He'll probably, he's going to give Blackwood everything he can handle at that number for that number one spot. I'll tell you that right now. Um, Canucks, I'm going with Demko, another goaltender. Uh, I, I think, well, where is it? Yeah, here we are. Demko. I think he's still incredibly underrated. You you won't he won't be underrated next year. He won't be. You're gonna find out what Demko's all about. That guy is I get like like Bernier but younger. Stopping pucks like crazy. Kind of gives you that Dominic Hashik feel. Yes, his numbers haven't been great, but Vancouver's defense is porous. It's not good. It's not good. Uh Anaheim. Gibson, I, I'm i taking Gibson because, first of all, they, most of their players are really young that would be considered underrated. So I they're not really, they haven't really reached their full potential yet. And his numbers don't look good, and I just want to give the guy a shout out. I know you're listening, John. I know you are, right? Of course, who wouldn't be watching, right? Uh, so I know you, you know, you might be feeling a little down. I would too if I was on the Anaheim Ducks. But... Um, he is, if he were on the Edmonton Oilers last year, possibly make a damn good run to the cup. Like I, and I like Smith, but you could take, if he was on Carolina last year, yes, better than the He's in the hullabuck category. He just, he's frustrated and a terrible defense in front of him and a sad to see. I'm giving you props, but I'm taking Gibson. Red Wings, or sorry, Nashville, Grimaldi. I've been, I've been talking about him for a long time. Uh, he's only 5'6", 180 pounds, gives her every single night, doesn't get enough credit for what he does. Uh, this year, he's finally, finally going to get a chance in a top six role, and I think he's going to put up some pretty decent points. Uh, very underrated player, good two-way player. Um, Wild, Eck. Erickson Eck, I've been talking about him for a while now. He's tw- he's only 24 years old, but he's been in the league for a few years. He's been a solid two-way center for a long time, and now he's just starting to get some props for how good he really is. Um, and uh, I that's my guy. I I had Greenway as the breakout player for ne- for that year. I almost took Jared Spurgeon um, because he's one of those guys as well that has been on the underrated list for so long. He's not underrated anymore. So I, I kind of didn't take him. I wanted to give a a shout out to Erickson. Heck, um, wings, Heronic. Watch this guy. He's like a freaking giant on an Island there in Detroit, where they're just figuring out their defense. They haven't had, uh, you know, guys like Stetcher, like they have okay. Mark Stahl barely in the league right now. Danny DeKaiser is, I don't know, his injuries have pretty much ruined him. Uh, he stands out as like one of their only defensemen, and he just totally stands out. When you watch Detroit, you see a guy who is going is a stud defenseman. Uh, very underrated has been for a couple of years now. Senators Batherson. I've been shouting out this dude for a long time. And uh, this will be also the breakout player probably for them as well. I think I took him as the breakout player for them. But major underrated already. Not a word I hear about Drake Batherson. They talk about Kachuk and Stutzla, and so they should. So people should. They. Who's they? Who's they? Uh, I gave a... I'll give a shout out to Artem Zub too. Had a fantastic year last year, but Batherson is my guy. And finally, the Sabres. Jack Eichel. Oh, you know, I got to do Montreal Canadiens. Jack Eichel. I have had to do, I've been doing so much stuff with Jack Eichel with all this trade talk. I've been talking around the league about Eichel going to Minnesota, New York Rangers, whatever the case may be. And you hear their fans say, He's a whiner. He's a cancer in the room and all of this nonsense. Nonsense. 
He didn't put up the greatest point production. Hearing things like, you know, Eck is as good as Eichel and all this kind of stuff. It's like the guy is if if he if he would have got into a good or a, a decent organization and uh, been able to play for, he would be a top seven center in the league. Easy, easy, hundred point player. Easy. The guy is fantastic, and he's fantastic defensively too. I can't believe I'm saying that Jack Eichel is underrated, but he is underrated. And finally, I missed Montreal. I'll do Montreal real quick. Where did they go? Oh, Montreal Canadiens. Here we go. And that's Lekkonen. Uh I don't know why they don't give that guy more ice time. I really don't. They just don't like smallish players, I guess, that – I don't know if. Let me put it this way: If you if, if they they don't give Lekkinen anywhere near the ice time, thirteen minutes. Get, give him to someone that that he can go out and play. Give him to a team out there that he can go out and play and see what he can actually do. I think he's got more offense than that. But he gives her. He's a great two way winger. Um, he doesn't get anywhere near enough respect in Montreal. I'll tell you what. Your Mike Hoffman acquisition for four million dollars compared to Lekkonen at two three, I'll take Lekkonen all day long. Okay, that's my full forty two boys and girls. Thank you for listening. Uh, hit the subscribe and all of that. I I get like all these likes. I get all these views, but people don't like to subscribe to my channel for some reason. Let me know why. Uh, and uh, I'm going to send some community pearls out to the land right now. All right. Helen just ground them up this morning. These are rainbow pearls out to the all the lands in the NHL. Helen just ground them up. Also, subscribe. Hit the bell. Get yourself a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace. Pearlocopter right to your door and signed by me. Who wouldn't want that? I don't know. Okay, bye.